Hello everyone, this is CJ with Cycletron. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of you who've been watching my videos and supporting the channel through subscriptions and your comments. I really appreciate it. Uh, so if you notice the, the title or the thumbnail, You're Not a Real Harley Guy, I'm not directing that towards anyone. That comment actually came from a viewer who was telling me that I'm not a real Harley guy and intended it as an insult. I wasn't insulted. Actually, I was inspired to make that uh, this video after that comment. Uh, I mean, how could I be insulted? First of all, uh, I've never considered myself to be a real Harley guy. He's making the wire out of 200 mile range. I have never aspired to be a real Harley guy. And quite frankly, I don't even know what a real Harley guy is. But it just got me thinking about a broader point about how uh, motorcyclists in some instances uh, want to put themselves in smaller and smaller groups. And as long as they're in the group they like, they like they're happy they can identify. And if they see somebody that's not in their motorcycle group or demographic, they don't like those folks for whatever reason. So I really, really want to drill down on that. Also, this ties in with my re uh, recent video about Harley Davidson's customer problem. And the point of that video was how years ago, decades ago, Harley Davidson identified various customer uh, segments based on demographics and based on identity, you know, how these different groups saw themselves. And those were, the, the terms used for those various groups in that video came from Harley Davidson, they didn't come from me. And when I was doing that video, I thought that that was how Harley saw those various groups. And now I've come to realize that most of the people within those groups, that's how they identified themselves. Harley was just describing what people were, were already saying about themselves. So let's, let's go through this a little bit. I mean, have you ever heard someone say that someone who ro rode a Goldwing wasn't a real Honda guy or a real Honda gal, uh, if it was a lady? Uh, I don't think I have. And I also got a comment along these lines that, you know, you're not a real Harley rider unless you've ridden a kickstart Harley Davidson for at least a year. And I thought, wow, that's really specific. And that's going to exclude a lot of people who ride Harley Davidson motorcycles. Um, you know, even the Model T, after a few years of its, after its introduction, they introduced electric start in addition to the hand crank. So do you think there were people in the, in the in 1916 saying that someone else wasn't a real Ford driver if they used the electric start. I mean, it's just I'm trying to not, you know, I'm just trying to really understand what is driving this and, and what's the end result? What's the benefit? Uh, what's the point of that? You know, on that point of the kickstart, I think the only time, the last time, and maybe the only time I've ever seen someone kickstart a Harley Davidson was when I was on uh, work travel to San Francisco, I was downtown, I was driving around for something, and uh, a woman comes out of a bar and walks up to her Harley and kickstarts that thing in one, in one kick, and off she went. Uh, you know, so I'm thinking back, that's 1988, that's, that's a long time ago. So uh, I'm, I imagine the people who have ridden a kickstart Harley Davidson is, is a very small group indeed. So, you know, what, what's the point of all this? I mean, do you hear Ducati riders say that you're not a real Ducati guy if you ride a monster or brace yourself a scrambler? Uh, of course you don't. So why, why is it important for certain riders to identify with certain makes and models. I think on, on a more serious note, it's good, especially as you if you gain experience with motorcycles, that you understand what types of motorcycles you like to ride, what gives you the most pleasurable experience on a bike. And sometimes uh, those criteria gravitate towards a certain brand, uh, like Harley Davidson or Ducati or BMW. So that makes sense. I can see identifying with a certain make or even model of of motorcycle. But what I don't understand is uh, 
you know, if somebody doesn't make, meet that criteria or have, in, uh, enjoy the same things that I do about motorcycles, they're not real X, Y, or Z. So let me know what, uh, what you think about this in the comments section. Have you encountered this? Um, and I'm, my concern is that over time, you know, these are distinctions without a, or these are differences without a distinction. And I think motorcyclists could end up segregating themselves into smaller and smaller groups. In fact, and segregating themselves into irrelevance. And going back to Harley Davidson in particular, you know, all this uh, customer fragmentation, as it were, I, I think Harley Davidson as a company is responsible for a lot of that, you know, appropriating the, the image of the club riders to sell motorcycles to the masses, you know, to, to convey a certain image or lifestyle that people could buy into by simply buying a motorcycle, which quite frankly, isn't, isn't authentic. I mean, either you're part of that lifestyle or you're not. And, you know, people could ride a given brand and model of motorcycle for vastly different reasons. And, and that's okay. So, you know, if you look at, at in the, in the car world, do, do you ever hear somebody say, Hey, he's not a real Ford driver because he doesn't drive a Mustang or she doesn't drive, um, you know, some other model of Ford. I mean, you, you, you see that a little bit, the Ford and Chevy thing, although that's pretty much by and large gone by the wayside. Uh, you might see a revival of that between the Jeep and the new Ford Bronco, but by and large, uh, those discussions tend to be not very serious and, and a little bit tongue in cheek. Whereas with a lot of, uh, motorcycle brand, sometimes it becomes really serious as far as I'm in this group, but I'm definitely not in that group. And that group isn't part of my group. So again, what, what is that all about? And, and to what end, uh, what does this really accomplish? Um, you know, with, there's a lot of pressure on motorcyclists to be able to continue in this world. I mean, not only, uh, car, uh, being on a motorcycle versus car, you've got people, uh, with distracted driving in cars, you've got increasing legislation for, for safety uh, requirements on motorcycles that trickle down from cars. You pretty soon you're going to have autonomous driving. How does motorcycles, how do motorcycles fit into that? Uh, you're going to have, you know, just a push to replace internal combustion engines with electric vehicles. You know, in a lot of these scenarios, motorcyclists can end up being on the short end of the stick and politically, if you will, there's not going to be a lot of uh, leverage or power if, as a group, motorcyclists can't just see things in a broader sense. So that those are my thoughts on this topic. Uh, again, please drop me your comments down below and let me know what you think. Again, thanks very much.